up, a wily driver at the go-kart derby. Has someone been fiddling with the time trials? A precious pet rabbit does a runner. How will our detectives track him down? A monster theft at a movie theatre. Who stole the hot dogs? And an intruder on board. Can our seafaring sleuths work out who it is? A prowler on the high seas. Whoa, can't wait to see that one. <gasps> Me either, but first, pop on your 3D glasses, Steve, because we're off to see a monster movie with Alex and Holly. <laughs> Made it! And with time to spare. Wow! There are some great movies on, but the 3D monster movie's gonna be a killer. Oh, cool. 3D glasses. The latest in cool fashion? <laughs> Maybe not. Just enough time for a make your own hot dog. What? Someone must have stolen them. But who? Hey, Alex. That woman looks suspicious. I reckon she's a suspect. But it could have been a grab and run job. Maybe it was that lady with the dog. She's certainly eating something. Another suspect. Let's check upstairs. Hmm. That usher could have dashed down and grabbed them. Our third suspect. But how are we going to work out which one did it? Let's go check out the hot dog stand for clues. Criminals who eat lots of salty fast food are more likely to be caught by police. That's because salt is sweated out through pores in our fingers and the salt leaves corrosive fingerprints. OK, every self-respecting detective looks for prints. Hey, Alex, look up there. The usher's eating ice cream. If he'd just polished off a whole lot of hot dogs, there's no way he'd have room for ice cream. For the moment, he's off the suspect list, leaving that suspicious woman and the lady with the dog. Hey, look at that tray liner. It's a bit dirty. Can't see any prints on it, though. But that doesn't mean there aren't any. You grab that, and I'll borrow this vinegar. I've seen this on a detective show. They used a special acid, but vinegar's close. I'll soak the tray liner. And we'll make sure it's all covered. Now we need to dry it. Hurry up, Alex. We haven't got all day. You'd be amazed at how clever forensic detectives are at finding fingerprints. You can't see any on this piece of paper. Not yet, that is. But this is a special chemical. It's poured onto the tray and the paper is dipped into the chemical. It's dried with a hot iron. Then it's off with the lights and the paper is examined through red glasses as a green light is shone over it. And sure enough, out of nowhere, fingerprints suddenly appear. That's because the clever chemical has lifted the prints out of the paper fibres. Now they can be identified and the criminal arrested. Wow, police can detect fingerprints on almost anything these days. Mm, they'd certainly have no trouble detecting your fingerprints, Steve. Look at your fingers, there's sauce on them <laughs> and mustard, not to mention salty sausage. Mm, OK, look, I admit it, I'm a messy eater, but it's the only way to eat a hot dog, Shay. Mm, I prefer a slow, more refined style of hot dog consumption. See, clean fingers and no crumbs anywhere. 
Yeah, can I try? Okay, well, slowly does it. Okay. Just ease it to... <laughs> you can hang on to that one. Thank you very much. Someone's stolen the hot dogs. And we suspect they've left prints on this tray liner. We can't see them, but I've come up with a brilliant way to make them show up. Using vinegar. So on that detective show, as soon as the paper was dry, the fingerprints showed up. But whose prints are they going to be? Well, the usher's already out of the picture. So they have to be the suspicious woman's or the dog lady's. Huh, there aren't any. Oh, I remember. I'll just borrow the usher's torch. This should do the trick. Pass me the glasses. They use green light. Hmm, still nothing. What's that? Look through the red lens. That's it. While well, Alex shines the green light and I look through the red lens, I can clearly see a print. A poor print? We found our hot dog thief. Mystery solved. You're right, guys. It wasn't a person at all who stole the hot dogs. The cheeky thief got away from his owner, leaving an incriminating paw print at the scene. And Holly's recollection of that forensic technique was inspired. It's exactly how experts recover hard-to-see fingerprints from suspicious documents. Fingerprints and paw prints leave traces of amino acids, which under coloured lights and using special acids show up for all to see. The monster movie is awesome. And so is our reward, a monster-sized carton of popcorn. And guess what? The popcorn <laughs> really looks 3D. <laughs> awesome. Hot dogs, popcorn and a 3D monster movie. Now, there is no better way to relax than that. <laughs> Except maybe a dozy day out on your mum's boat. Maybe. <sighs> I must have dozed off. No wonder Jed and I spent the whole morning cleaning the boat. What? Wake up, Jed. Look, dirty footprints. All over the deck we cleaned. Do you think we've had an intruder? Come on, let's check the rest of the boat. What a mess! They've even helped themselves to a sandwich. Who would have come aboard and done such a thing? What's this? Someone's drink? Smells weird. I reckon it's a clue. But who would have left a funny liquid behind? Maybe Mum's been doing some of her river water experiments. Or perhaps Joe the Bodie. He's always testing out alternative fuels. Then again, it could be Pete, the tour boat cook. He likes to check out other people's boats. If we can work out what this liquid is, it will tell us which one of them has been aboard. But first, let's tidy this mess up. Archaeologists found a 2,000-year-old wine bottle in a Roman tomb. Inside it were two liquids, wine underneath, and on top, olive oil to stop the wine going bad. We need to match our mystery liquid with the liquids our suspects use. Mum experiments with river water. So I'm collecting some of that. Jed's down in the galley getting some of Joe the Bodie's corn syrup. I can't believe he thinks it'll work as an alternative fuel. And he's grabbing the same sort of cooking oil Pete uses. Now we've got everything we need to get our experiment underway. 
First, we'll add different coloured food dyes to the water in our test tubes. Pink, blue, red and green. So we'll add each of our liquids to the test tubes and see what happens. How cool. I love mysteries like this one. Hey, Steve, I reckon we try a bit of experimenting on our own. What do you say? Oh, so that's a good idea. I've got the bottles all lined up and they've all got a mystery liquid inside them. OK, so I'm just putting in some food colouring into each bottle and let's see what happens. Look at that. They're all different, Shane. Yeah. Check that out. In this one, the food colouring's all mixed around. Yeah, and this second one, it's kind of fizzy. Oh, yeah. And this one, look at that, it's just sitting on top like a blob. <laughs> Not doing much, is it? And in the fourth one, it's making a really pretty pattern. That's fantastic. But, you know, it looks great. Not really sure what it means. Oh, I thought you were the expert, Steve. <laughs> no, sorry, Shane, I wouldn't have a clue. Oh. I tell you what I do <laughs> think, though. What? I think I'm glad we have Imogen and Jet on the case. Someone's come aboard our boat and made a horrible mess. So Jed and I collected samples used by our suspects to see if any of them match. OK, Jed, mystery liquid first. Oh, it mixed right through. So that's what we're looking for. Try Pete's cooking oil. That just sits on top. So we can rule out Pete, the tour boat cook, cos the oil didn't mix through. Now for the corn syrup. Wow, that looks cool. It sank straight to the bottom. No mixing there. So Joe, the boat is off the hook too. It's not looking good for Mum. Let's find out with the river water. <laughs> no surprises there. It mixed through perfectly, just like our mystery liquid did. So Mum has been experimenting again. She's our messy intruder. Nice detective work, guys. One way forensic scientists check out unknown liquids at crime scenes is to test their density. Denser liquids, like corn syrup, sink in ordinary water, whereas oil is much less dense, so it floats to the top. Finding the relative density of a liquid is an important way of working out what it is. Jed's fishing for our dinner, and I've made tonight's mystery cocktails. No, Jed, I didn't use syrup or oil. <laughs> Drink up. <laughs> Although, I did use a little river water. <laughs> of course I didn't, silly. Would I do that to a fellow detective? <laughs> so cool having an uncle who owns a go-kart track. Today, the top three drivers are trying out for the big challenge. Wow, that's fast. Isabel and I are in charge of timekeeping. We get to work out who gets pole position. One minute, ten seconds. OK, got it. Car one, one ten. One minute, seventeen. That's for car six. In it goes. Whoever's fastest overall gets the best starting position. It all depends on the results in the computer log. OK, save and close. Come on, Isabel. It's 12.15. Let's go get the drivers a drink. Refreshments, guys. Cool driving, Oscar. Good one, Claudia. Congratulations, Luke. You guys must be thirsty. Time to get back to our time trials. Hey, didn't I close this down? And look, an oily smudge. You don't think someone's been tampering with the results? We'll never remember what they were. 
Worse still, it could be cheating. It could only be one of the drivers. Luke, Oscar or Claudia. They're all desperate to have that number one place on the grid. Better go check the go-karts to make sure they've not been tampered with too. Come on, Isabel, to the pits. The world's first go-kart was built in California in 1956. The midget racing car was powered by a modified chainsaw engine and became so popular, it soon went into mass production. When this practice session is over, that'll be our chance to check out the carts. OK, looks like the coast is clear. I'll check this one. Give me a push. Steering? Yeah, it's OK. And the brakes on this one are excellent. This cart's fine. You check the next one, Isabel. Ready? The steering? Yep, looks good. And the brakes? OK. Nothing suspicious here. Back to the computer. Let's have a closer look at these results to see if there's evidence of cheating. Lots of criminals get caught because evidence of their crime is stored inside computers. Even if they try to erase information stored on a hard disk, expert investigators can open it up and find incriminating data. What the criminal thought was wiped off the disk is still there. And investigators can do exactly the same thing with mobile phones found at crime scenes. They simply attach the phone to a computer and suck out all the data. They find out when calls were made, for how long and to which numbers. It's amazing how much incriminating evidence experts can find hidden inside computer-based gadgets. Wow, I had no idea people could find out what was in my phone. Yeah, and I thought once you trash stuff on your computer, it was all gone forever. No way, Shay. It could all still be there, stored somewhere on the hard disk. So all those photos I deleted where I look terrible, they're all still in there? <laughs> it could be, Shay. All it needs is some clever detective to come along and you are busted. Hang on, busted for what? Well, for looking terrible. Oh, thanks, Steve. <laughs> well, your phone could get you into big trouble too, you know. How? Well, police could work out that you were at a crime scene and then they'd be able to call you up and question you. Shay, I think that's a little far-fetched. Really? Hey, you might want to get that. It could be the police. Hello? Mum, not now. <laughs> well, let's get back to the go-kart track. <laughs> Isabel and I are working out who gets pole position in the big go-kart challenge. But we suspect one of the drivers is cheating and the race data is going to show us who. While the drivers are having another warm-up, let's see what we can find out. Now, we saved the data at drinks break, which was 12.15 on the dot. That's always recorded at the top. Oh, this says it was saved at 12.20, five minutes after. So changes have been made. And if I press the undo key, it'll show us how we left it. Wow, look at that. The placings were reversed for carts number one and 10. Oscar and Luke's grid positions were swapped. Oscar's put himself in pole position, but we've revealed his cheating ways. Great discovery, guys. During the drinks break, Oscar did sneak over and rearrange the time trial data. He removed Luke's car from the number one position and put his car in there instead. But he was caught out because computer-savvy detectives reconstructed the crime. 
using data stored inside the computer. With Oscar disqualified, it was a two-car race. And Luke won fair and square. He really is a wicked driver. Wow, that was exciting. Despite all the odds, Luke came out on top. You know, I think we could both learn a thing or two from him about go-kart driving. Yeah, he certainly deserved the chequered flag. And as they say, winners are grinners. But I'm sorry to say, there's not going to be much grinning at Jessica's house because she and Dean are about to discover that someone very precious has gone missing. Our pet bunny loves Silverbeat. Definitely not Dean's favourite. You can feed him today. Let's go. Oh no, he's not there. Oh dear, someone's left the door open and he's escaped. Not again. Who's the culprit this time? Otto, he likes to give Cecil his morning carrot. Or Nick, he was playing outside earlier. Or India Blue, she's crazy about Cecil. So they have to be our suspects. More importantly, where's Cecil gone? If I was a bunny, I'd head for cover. So let's look in those places first. Looks like Dean's already on the trail. What's he found? Rabbit poo. It's fresh, all right. Less than an hour old, I'd say. That rules out Nick. He's been at soccer practice since mid-morning, so we can cross him off the list. He didn't let Cecil escape. That leaves Otto and India Blue. But we need to find our bunny before he gets into trouble. And I know just the place to start looking. Did you know that Australia had no native rabbits? But in 1859, 24 bunnies were introduced from Europe. Trouble is, they bred like rabbits, so that six years later, there were two million. My rabbit reference book tells me everything you need to know about bunnies. Here we are. Rabbits love eating herbs and vegetables. So let's check out Mum's herb pots. Yep, something's been nibbling. So I think we're on the right track. Aha, uh -huh, a bit of rabbit fur. We're definitely on the right track. But he's nowhere to be seen. Oh, I've had an idea. Come on, Dean. Shay, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just checking this rabbit book to see if there are any clues to help Jessica and Dean find Cecil. Oh, right. Any hints? Mm, oh, let's see. Rabbit droppings make excellent fertiliser. Rabbit teeth don't stop growing. Oh, and rabbits can't vomit. <laughs> what? This isn't very helpful. Anything else? Uh, yeah, rabbits can see behind themselves without turning around. And they can purr just like a cat. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, this is going nowhere, Shay. I think we better get back to the big bunny search at Jessica's place. Oh, they can jump almost a metre in the air. Dean and I discovered that our pet bunny Cecil had escaped from his cage. We know Nick's not to blame. But Otto and India Blue are still on our suspect list. Whoever fed Cecil last might know how he got out. One, two, three, four, five. Same as yesterday. So that rules out Otto. He didn't give Cecil his carrot this morning. That only leaves India Blue. But she wouldn't be careless enough to leave the cage open. She loves Cecil. Hang on, she loves cuddling up with him on the sofa. Oh, they're not here. Ah, but they have been. I think we found out who was with Cecil last. It must have been India Blue who left the door open. <laughs> You're right, Jessica. After trying to tempt Cecil with a tasty lettuce leaf, India Blue popped him back in his cage. She closed the top lid, but forgot to latch the side door. 
As soon as she was gone, Cecil made a break for it and headed next door for something fresher than leftover lettuce leaves. And the whole missing pet saga was solved thanks to well-established tracking techniques, like looking for traces of poo and fur and figuring out where a missing animal might look for food. Come on, Dean. Now we've got to find Cecil. Aha! Uh -huh. Look, a rabbit-sized hole. Oh, <laughs> there he is. Looks like he was only dining out. <laughs> oh, excellent. Cecil was found after all. Thank goodness our clever detectives were on the case. Yeah, and we'll have more super sleuths tracking down their unwitting suspects next time. Bye. Bye.